Thank you for joining me on the Elevation Church broadcast today. Uh, it's such a joy to have you and I know that God's word coming your way today will minister to you grace and will minister favor to you and you will increase in the knowledge of God and your life will never be the same again. I'll be wrapping up uh, the series on moving from multitude to disciples today. Uh, I, I, I love to emphasize one more time that God is not only interested in uh, having multitudes believe us, but is much more interested in having disciples. And we have said that the journey from multitude to disciples is uh, uh, a journey of spiritual development, a journey of uh, deepening our faith in Christ Jesus. And we have looked at certain uh, uh, things that God uses to grow our faith. And I'm going to be examining uh, today pivotal circumstances and how God uses situations and circumstances to deepen our dependency on Him. As Romans uh, chapter 8 uh, verse 28 says, For we know that all things, all things, good, bad, ugly, excellent things, not too nice things, but it said all things. And you know, I, like I love to say, the difference between God and the devil is that the devil wants to always get to you with bad situations, working negative things. But God says, whether negative or positive, the reason why I'm God is that I can walk around all of them to lead you to your destiny and give you your future. This will be the crux of our discussion today. And I trust that this will be a blessing to you and uh, deepen your dependency on God, help you to grow spiritually, which is the aim of this series of teaching. I'll be back to speak a blessing over you after now. And I trust that this will be a blessing to you. Please enjoy it. God bless you. We experience pivotal circumstances in life. And sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not so good, sometimes they're so bad. Romans 8, 28 to 29. Let's read together. Let's read together. We'll see something in this verse of the scripture. Let me quickly, just quickly immerse you into the Bible. Uh, uh, Romans 8, 28 to 29. New Living Translation, I read. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance. He chose them to become like his son so that his son will be the firstborn amongst many brothers and sisters. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Say a believing amen. As I say, believe in amen. amen. There's an undeniable relationship between uh, uh, situations, circumstances, and our ability to trust God that leads to tangible spiritual development. In fact, it often seems like uh, um, as if God depends more on circumstances to make us like Jesus uh, than maybe reading the Bible or fasting. Because you don't fast all the time. Neither do you read the Bible all the time, but you go through stuff all the time. Sometimes, you know, the amount of situations that you, you, you go through in a day, if God will just leverage on each and every one of them, by the time you lay your head to rest, you're a changed person. 
Am I saying the truth? Or from the, the, the doorman who, even though he's paid to open the door, but he won't open the door for you. <laughs> because he doesn't like your face. And you just wonder, why me? And then God says, push that aside. I just want you to know that not everybody will like you forever. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> and then to the, the person who smiles at everybody, but will refuse to smile at you. And to the boss who's supposed to recommend you for a promotion, but who will not. But will tell you you are doing a good job. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, to, to, to backtrack to, to the home. To living with a man who, who will not take care of you. Or living with a woman who, who will always talk you down and tell you you are less than a man. And yet God says remain in the marriage. <laughs> Tough. Am I saying the truth? Yeah. We go through stuff all the time. It's a continuous stuff. I mean, it's a continuous thing that, you know. So it, it seems to me like God would really want to use circumstances even more. And we're taught about practical, applicable teachings, you know, and all that. You're supposed to engage the Bible, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, pray and depend on God. But God uses circumstances, situations, in fact, he wants to draw a parallel so that when I spend it, my, some time with him, I'm able to connect with what I'm going through because he uses that much more even to communicate with me. And that's why the Bible says, for we know that all things, all means all, good, bad, ugly, not so good, all things. It's not that God glories in bad situations or that God is the author of evil, no. But God can use everything. You know how God is more powerful than the devil, is that the devil only uses bad situations to get at us. But God uses all, all, all situations, you know, to get at us or to, 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 to bring his glory out of our lives. So it's very important that I allow this to rest in me. That one of the things that God wants to use as a tool to grow my faith and my dependency on him, which is faith, the ability to trust in God, is, the, I mean, are the things that I will go through. The things that I will go through. God wants to use those things uh, uh, to, to, to touch me. So, it's not what happens to me in life or what, what happens to me in life that matters. It's not what happens to me in life that matters. It's what happens in me. A lot of the time, we focus on what happens to us, the things that are happening to us, not what is happening in us. Look at this scripture. Look at this scripture. Uh, um, let, me, let me just bring out two more scriptures, then I'll, I'll go into you know, the meat of this message. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7, for instance, Paul was writing here. Paul was a man of many situations and circumstances. You know, when we say God use us, and we say we're moving from multitude to disciple, we need to, uh, a lot of the time, check the disciples, check the apostles, and check the kind of life they're living. This is not a matter of faith. The proof of my faith is not that I'm living a trouble-free life. The proof of my faith that is in the midst of trouble, I can command divine presence. In the midst of trouble, I am not stagnant. I'm changing. I'm growing. Things are happening in my life that the trouble has not caused me to draw away from God or curse God. I hope you understand what I'm saying. That, that's what shows that I'm depending on God. Faith is measured by my ability to depend on God through the thick and the thin. Are we still here together? I said, are we still here together? 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17, from New International Version, Paul writes, and he said, Therefore we do not lose heart, though our heart, what man, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporal, but what is unseen is eternal. Are you still with me today? We'll fix our eyes 
not on what is seen. Because we know what? There may be some pumeli on the outside. But really, on the inside, something more glorious is what is happening. Something is happening in me. It's not what happens to me that matters. But what is happening in me? What is happening in me? What is happening in me? Let me show you another scripture. Another scripture. John, I'm sorry, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Tap your neighbor. Say, it's time to read this one. You must read this one. Tell your neighbor, read this one. Read this one. <laughs> James chapter 1. And I want to read uh, uh, verse 2 to 4. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Say amen, somebody. He says, count it all joy. Count it all joy. Consider it all joy. When you fall into diverse situations and circumstances. Let me read another translation of that scripture. It says, consider it pure joy, my brother and sister. Whenever you face trials of many kinds. And verse 3 says, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. It says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. The word I wanted to bring out from that other translation is mature. Mature and complete. Mature and complete. So that you're, you're mature and complete. It's important for us to understand that God wants to use good situations to push us forward in our dependency on him. At the same time, if we go through a bad situation, he still wants to leverage on that bad situation as well to push us to get closer to him. I had the testimony of a young lady um, uh, no, in a church I worship once in the U.S. who gave this, this wonderful testimony about how uh, she was looking for a job. She was on a terrible job. And then God answered her prayer. She got this job. Uh, uh, the job um, was to like, manage a restaurant um, at the topmost floor of the World Trade Center. Uh, this was uh, pre-9-11. You know, so she, she got the job, flew down to New York, did all the interview, and then they interviewed her. I mean, sorry, they introduced her to everybody, you know, there and said, this is the new manager, da, 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 da. She got in, like, on the Friday, and she was to resume on Monday. So she went for pre-resumption and, you know, did all the orientation. And over the weekend, they sent her an email saying that her service was no longer required. So she'll be on the next, next plane back to Atlanta. And she was devastated. She got in there, you know, not willing to listen to her pastor or her cluster head or anybody talking to her that uh, God is still good. And God, what, what kind of God flashes you with a blessing? <laughs> Just flash you with blessing and carry his blessing away. And you want to say it's a, it's a good God. You know, she possibly skipped one or two Sundays and still grieving, you know, just like a lady who just lost her first love. You know, they cover themselves, lock themselves up. Everybody's saying, come out. They've not had a bath in one week. You know, all those kind of nonsense, you know. <laughs> just because you, 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 you don't know that God is saving you from somebody who will give you agony in life. Because what happened to this lady? Just two months down the line, the terrorists struck the World Trade Center. Not a soul from that particular restaurant escaped that attack. Not one. Everyone in the restaurant, as at the time of the attack, died. They were on the topmost floor. Died. So a few months down the line, she got the understanding of why God flashed out with the blessing. Some other times in life, you may not get the understanding until you get to heaven. So whether God allows you to get your understanding a few months down the line, or it's when you get to heaven, uh, still believe me. For we know, we know, that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. 
Because you may not know what, what, what is good in this. What is good in this? What is good in this? Trials. Test of faith. They, 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 they bring perseverance in us. And everything, when you put, put everything together, what you get at the end of the day is, 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 is faith developing. Faith developing. Faith developing. You know, out of, out of all that, what you get is faith developing. When we have good circumstances, the truth is that, <laughs> uh, you know, positive circumstances, like the birth of a child, uh, falling in love with um, a good guy or a good lady who speaks in tongues. Because some people uh, look for, you know, lady born in church and bred in church. They're just like an angel. <laughs> Oh, God answered a prayer. Little prayer prayed in faith. Good things can melt disbelief and erase uh, cynicism. Uh, but the truth is that times of peace and prosperity and health do not create a sense of need. The good times. If you're not careful, a lot of the time we stand the chance to lose God in good private circumstances than we do even in bad private circumstances. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Somebody's getting promotion. Boom, boom. After a while, you begin to feel like God is good, but I'm good too. <laughs> I mean, you, know that, you know that kind of feeling. God is good, but I'm not bad too. I'm good. You know, everybody likes me. You know, like I was saying in the first service, some people, you know, by the time all the good, you know, the good times are coming, that's where you, you begin to give all kinds of excuses. You know, the devil doesn't draw you directly. He just gives opportunities and occasions. You know, like, oh, I'm a leader, I'm a worker, I'm supposed to fast on Wednesday. Uh, but you know, when you're in Europe, or when you're in a, in a meeting with big people and they, they serve tea and coffee, all that, how can you tell them, you know, you're fasting? You, you need to, as if God did not know. When he was giving you the job that you're going to be having a meeting with big people. I hope you understand. But because you know everything is good, but let, let him just flash you and you, you get an email that the company uh, budget is becoming an issue and uh, we may consider, you know, some criteria uh, to, to what our budgets, like years of service, age, performance, you know, and all that. And then all of a sudden you begin to doubt, am I really that good? Like I thought. I was. <laughs> and then you remember that night VG may not be a bad idea. Yeah, you really remember. The prayer of agreement with your spouse consistently may not be a bad idea. Yeah, you remember that. Ah, it not be a bad idea. Maybe if I fast once in a week, my name will not enter the list. I hope you understand what I'm saying. That's how it starts. Then it looks like God starts to get your attention gradually. And gradually, gradually, and gradually. But God doesn't want us to always get to that point. The great writer and preacher, C.S. Lewis, said, God whispers to us in our pleasure, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pain. Shouts in our pain. It's a megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Sometimes it's, it's when the pain is there that you really feel this scream from God when it's a looming, pivotal event. And I trust God this morning that God will open our eyes to see those events that we must allow him to turn around to, to, to use to, to get our attention. I need to encourage someone as I bring this message to a close. And that's that. I just feel it very strongly in my heart. That as we go into a new month, you need to be very, very conscious of your praise and thanksgiving. Yeah. This year is running so fast. And some people are already asking, why is this year running so fast? I've not even done much. Nothing is happening. God said, turn it to praise. Turn it to praise. Turn it to praise. 
wow i'm sure you enjoyed that greatly and i'm sure god spoke into your heart and i'm sure that the spirit of god is touching your heart right now uh, maybe you're going through something uh, that you know, was not desirable or something that you didn't even think uh, God would take you through. Maybe currently now you're even thinking that God has been wicked to you and God has not been a good God or a faithful God. But I'm sure uh, listening to that must have taught your heart a little. Let me just pour some more water on your thirsty soul. Uh, 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 God works with everything, everything that you're going through. I mean everything. And I'm just asking that you open your heart to him a little more. Uh, don't allow the devil to deceive you. God is not paying you back in your own coin. Uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, when we sow a bad seed, we may reap a bad seed. But God uh, does not uh, you know, just allow things to happen to us just anyhow. He allows things to happen to us to the end that we may become better. Like I said, it's not what happens to you in life that matters. It's what happens in you. And I want to pray for you today so that... Uh, Things that are happening to you will begin to make more sense to you. Things only make sense when you have a vital relationship with God because God is the revealer of secrets and tells you, He tells you everything that you need to know about the situations of your life so that you can be comforted and you can receive the energy with which to face the future. Let me pray for you today. I want you to uh, just look into your screen right now and say these uh, words after me. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I've been sinning against you. I ask that you forgive me my sins. Cleanse me from every unrighteousness. Wash me clean by your blood. I accept you today as my Lord and my personal Savior. Come into my life and give me a new beginning. Fill my heart with your spirit. In Jesus' precious name, amen. If you just say that prayer with me, uh, you are now saved, born again. And you can work on your vital connection with God. You can allow God to keep filling your heart with revelations from his word, with the truths of his word that will connect you vitally to him. Join the Bible believing church and if you live in the city of Lagos, the Elevation Church is on the lucky axis of Lagos. I want to invite you uh, to be a part of what God is doing in our congregation as you come on Sundays uh, to join us in any of our three services. Uh, it promises to be a wonderful time and a time of blessing for you as you join us. And on Wednesdays we run a midweek event that we call Switch. Please join us for Switch this Wednesday or any Wednesday that you are on the uh, lucky axis of Lagos, uh, just uh, uh, join us. Instead of getting into the traffic, come and be a part of what God is doing, especially if you're going back to the mainland. You can just wait around and worship with us at the Elevation Church and God will touch your life and bring you into a time of transformation in the precious name of Jesus. Uh, until I come your way again next week, I want you to look forward to a new week Feel with blessings, feel with favor, the hand of God showing up for you. You're enjoying divine interventions all through this new week in the name of Jesus. Keep making greatness come on and God bless you.
where the truth is real and greatness 